Hi, my name is Noah Barfield. And I'm Liam Gibbs. And welcome to Writer's Corner. So, I have never had you on my channel before. I don't think I've even mentioned you in passing, which has been a real shame, because we've known each other for so long now, actually. Like, three years. It's kind of ridiculous. It's because you're embarrassed to know me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no, you're just the only Canadian I keep in regular contact with. Tell us a little bit about your book, um, and then we can get into some of the writing tips that you have for us today. All right. Uh, well, my writing book is, uh, when people ask me, I like to give them the elevator pitch. That this is, uh, it's space sagas and uh, superhero comics stuck together. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the story that I tell people is I, I grew up with comic books. I grew up with like Spider-Man, X-Men, uh, go down the list. Yeah. And, uh, but I, can, I can't draw, right? No, yeah. Born, <laughs> but what do you do when you can't, when you can't draw? Because art is, is frigging expensive. And hard. I, you write the comic. <laughs> So it's a comic book, and uh, I'm not sure if everybody can see this, but it's a comic book, but yep. it's in book format. I like it a lot, and we'll give people the links in the description, um, so that way they can they can buy it and do whatever they want with it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have one very important question for you, okay? Um, how would you, how do you see yourself as an alien? I can say anything I want right yeah, now? Yeah, any, anything you want. Uh, let me see. I can. I definitely got wings because I got to get to work on time. <laughs> I got to be able to fly. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Like glass skin. I'm just throwing things out there. Glass skin. <laughs> uh, this, this all looks sexy, by the way. Okay. okay. All right. This is, I'm good looking. Okay. I. Uh, <clears throat> let me see. Huge, huge muscles. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me see. Uh, four arms. <laughs> so I got to carry in the groceries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can never have too many arms when you carry yeah. a grocery. Oh, yeah. uh, let me see. Super powerful legs, because I got, even though I can fly, I want to be able to jump and stuff like mm -hmm. that. And if there's anybody in the way, i got to kick them out of the way. <laughs> uh, normal, normal number of toes and fingers. Okay. Ten and ten. And uh, let me see, chiseled jaw. Okay. Thanos, but not not looking too old. Yeah, yeah. All right, younger Thanos. Okay, all right. All right? I think... Does that make any sense at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I definitely... I can definitely picture that. Very shiny. Everybody, everybody who's watching this right now uh, is drawing me. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, if any of my audience can sketch or draw in the slightest, please create this. I'd like to talk a little bit about writing. Um, you do science fiction, I do fantasy. They're parallels of each other, in my opinion. I don't think that I have the same level of experience you do in writing sci-fi. Um, so I would like for you to answer a couple questions pertaining to sci-fi and then also throw out any tips you have. So my first question is, what in your opinion are the types of sci-fi? What are some of the different subgenres of sci-fi that you've come across? And what are your favorite ones or like the easiest ones to write in your opinion? Everybody's aware of the soft and the hard. Yeah. Uh, but for those people that uh, quite aren't aware, soft is when... Oh, well, actually, let's start with this. Hard is when it takes actual science and builds on that. Okay. <laughs> uh, scientific principles, um, physics and stuff like that. Soft is when it just kind of makes it look like it's science, but it throws all those rules out the window, which is kind of like where mine falls in. My favorites would probably be the time travel stuff and, and maybe the alien stuff, because a couple of my favorite movies are, are you know, the Bill and Ted, Predator, mm -hmm. I even like Robocop. Okay. I'm not talking the new one, the old one. Yeah. Peter <laughs> well, that was pretty good. Uh, so... My favorites are the stuff that kind of build on technology, but the stuff that kind of doesn't care about the rules, but shows you, like, these are the cool gadgets we could have in the future. These are the cool aliens we can come across mm -hmm. in the future. But it doesn't exactly have to be realistic. Right. If these rules were in place, these are the cool things that we could have. And yeah. these are the cool things that could happen. Rather than being like, let me show you all of the rules that lead to the cool things. And one of my favorite subgenres is space horror. You know, trapped on the ghost ship, you know, or uh, you know, the the space station breaks down, and you got like some roaming parasite in the vents or something, you know, so, some real dead space thing. You yeah, know, that's that that's that's where I really like to see, um, I guess, the fantastical soft sci-fi stuff come into contact with like gritty reality. So it's, you got you got like the hard reality stuff, but then none of the math. And then, and then, and then you got, then you got like the soft <laughs> stuff, you know. So you just, you just remove the problematic part. <laughs> so my next question, being, 
when do you kind of clue your readers in um, to the type of sci-fi that you are writing? When do you throw in all of the time travel and aliens and robots and all of that stuff? I would say, like, there's probably two ways of going about it. You, you would throw in a lot of these elements only as you need them. Mm -hmm. But I think there are certain parts of it that you need to tell the readers up front. Like, if it's a hard or a soft thing, you kind of need to establish certain rules at the beginning. Okay. Because you don't want them getting in, you know, like, uh, 30 or 40 pages or whatever, and then kind of trying to establish everything yeah. there. There's certain things that they need to know going into the book. Okay. But then, like, you know, you know, time travel, do they use time travel? How does it work? Um, you know, you might not need to know that up front. Okay. You know, why waste their time at the beginning when you're trying to establish all this stuff in Act 1? Yeah. I, when, you know, you're not going to use it until Act 2 or 3, or, you know, it might even be cut out altogether mm -hmm. later on. Okay, um, I guess a follow-up question to that being, how do you keep it from getting too cluttered? Some of it is uh, just knowing what book you're writing when you're getting into it. Okay. So if you're writing a book where it's, you know, like it's science fiction, but it's, you know, it's a political sci-fi, like a lot of the Star Wars elements. Yeah. Uh, you're not exactly going to go into time travel and stuff like that. Like, why throw something in there when it has nothing to do with the book? Okay. Um, you know, the opposite, if, you know, if you're writing, like, say, Back to the Future, then there's no politics in there at all. Mm -hmm. There's no space wars. Uh, you don't need to get into, you know, the whole political climate at the time. What tips do you have for these beginning sci-fi writers? Uh, some of the some of the tips I would give people uh, anybody watching at home, mm. what you should do is study up on uh, what your favorite sci-fi stuff is. Like uh, you know, like if if you're really into the X-Men mm -hmm. in the books and things like that, just go out there and, and just find out as much as you can about how these people have built their worlds. If you're into uh, Star Wars and Star Trek, figure out how you know George Lucas and, and uh, Gene Roddenberry and all them just, they built their worlds. Right. And try to try to mimic that. Um, because what you need to do is you need to, as much as we talked about how soft sci-fi is not realistic and mm -hmm. hard sci-fi is realistic, you're going to have to put some realism in your right. stories. Even though sci-fi is totally pretend and totally unrealistic, totally fantastical, you need to uh, find a way to make that relatable, make that real life so that readers right. aren't completely lost when they're getting into your world. Now that we've kind of covered sci-fi pretty extensively, um, I'd like to talk a little bit about an area that you have much more expertise in than I do as well, um, conventions. I want you to tell me my audience a bit about some of the conventions you've been to. They're a lot of fun. Uh, you get to meet uh, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. They get to come and they get to see something they've never seen before. Like, right. well, mine is, you know, X-Men and Spaceball stuck together. They've seen X-Men, they've seen Spaceballs, but they haven't seen In a Galaxy Far, Far Away. They, they have a new concept. And so when you're going to the Comic-Cons and you're selling to, uh, like you're selling to people face-to-face, -face, it's different from being in a bookstore and hearing about how people are picking them up because you get to see, you get to talk to the people that are going to be buying or they're hopefully going to be buying your books or that you're going to see people that have bought them and they're coming over to say hi and how much they enjoy it or hopefully not how much they didn't enjoy it and they want to punch you in the face. So the conventions, they're, they're not so much... They are an opportunity for you to go and you can sell your book to a focused group because, uh, you know, a lot of the conventions that you go to, they'll be the sci-fi conventions, and if you're writing sci-fi, that's your people. But it's not just an opportunity to sell your book. It's yeah. an opportunity to, to show, to, to meet your audience, to, to see how they're, you know, how they're reacting to what you're doing uh, you know, what are you doing right? What are you doing wrong? A lot of people love getting author signatures. I, I imagine they're turning around and selling these on eBay. Things that you do oh, have yeah. to remember when you go to these conventions, if I could give another quick tip, is you got to be out of yourself. You have to. Yeah. It's a lot of eye contact, a lot of shaking hands. There are two types of people. You got those people, and then you got the. Hold on, I'm going to grab my phone here. You got the people that are. They're, they're just. They're playing Candy Crush or. I don't know whatever. Is on their phones right now. Uh, you gotta, you gotta be out going and get them over, catch their eyes, say, hey, you know, you, you, you look like you're not afraid to try something new. Get over here, check out a, check out a book series that I've been working on right now. It's, it's you know, it's great. Give it to them, hand it to them. Don't even wait for them to take it. Hand it to them. Tell them, leave through it, read the back cover, see what you think. 
I want to know what you think. You've uh, you got to be kind of like a... Oh, yeah, master. exactly. Like, come one, come all. If you were allowed to bring a up. megaphone to these conventions, yeah. you're not. That I've heard of anyway. But if you were yeah. allowed, bring yeah. your yeah. megaphone and get it over. Just stick to your megaphones for anybody considering being a creator or a vendor um, at a convention and maybe have an opportunity coming up or something. What, in your opinion, are some, uh, some essential things to bring? Bring your book. It's like you're going to throw them in a bag or maybe... you got to bring your books. Uh, what, what you or whatever it is you're selling. Okay. Right, your, right. Whatever yeah. it is that you made, you got to bring that. Uh, bring business cards. You know your, your spiel, mm -hmm. so you can just fire it off like that. But be ready for questions. Um, bring anything that you can get to attract them over to your booth. If you see anybody with a camera, you, you're taking pictures, come on over. I, I take a picture here. You, you got a microphone, you need a sound bite, I'm right here for you. Call people over. Just get ready to get in their faces. So you need the books, you need the business cards, you need the banners. There's probably a bunch of other B words I can't think of, right? Uh, any of the paraphernalia, like I've got, I sell posters of these things, you know, you got to bring those. Try to figure out what it is that your audience will want to buy. Even if they don't buy a book, they might buy a bookmark. For an easy two bucks and use that bookmark as an advertising thing have the website on there a couple of quotes maybe a review make the bookmark into an advertising tool hey guys noah from the future here and i know you're wondering what's with the skull man uh it's because i feel approximately this dead right now the reason being i have been editing for quite some time so i know you're probably thinking noah why didn't the video come to a natural conclusion why are you doing this thing it's because I have been editing for a while, and also a lot of the footage at the end of the video was lost. I have had to replace some of my hardware and some of my software because it was giving me a lot of issues while I was recording with Liam, and there have been whole swaths that have just lost audio, and the video is glitchy. So I thought I would go ahead and put this in as kind of a natural ending, or as natural as I could get it, because the rest of the footage that I had is kind of unusable for which i apologize i still hope you guys like the video despite all of the technological problems that came our way liam was very kind considerate and understanding about everything and he made it an incredibly easy experience to get through despite all of the embarrassment that i was honestly feeling at having such technological breakdowns right in front of somebody that i respected and i kind of look up to because he's been doing this longer than me, and I have a huge amount of respect for everything that he's been able to do. So I'm going to be putting his links down below for all the social media, for all the places that you can buy in a galaxy far, far away, as well as the usual links for Legend Land and for Tale of the Nameless God, and all of that stuff, all of the social media things. Um, also, as a small general update, I am back to writing Legend Land, Tale of the Nameless God again on Wattpad and I'm considering some other writing things as well. I'm going to be doing a general update video next time that comes out. Hopefully, since it's going to be a little more informal, a little more about me, it should come out quicker within the next week or so is what I'm hoping. Anyway, happy Revenge of the Fifth, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.